Hello everyone. Today I'm sharing with you a abstract piece that I made on a Canva board from Canson. This is a type of substrate that you buy in a pad and it is attached on one side and you just fold it back and then you work on it and when you're done you cut the rubbery stuff on the one side and take it off and then there's more underneath. Kind of like a watercolor pad but um, more of a board with a canvas texture on it. Artboards, Canva artboards, I think they're called. Anyway, you saw there in the picture. And I've put some painter's tape around the edge um, in preparation of messing with it. And I'm starting out with some mark making. I, well, actually the thing I started out with was I picked a color and my color choice was red, violet which is like you know the red side of purple not the blue side but the red side and so I was using my um, color wheel which is an extremely useful tool to kind of get an idea of what colors I could put with, put with red violet and I decided that a yellow green which is the opposing color on the wheel would be a good choice. And then maybe I would use some of the yellow or the green that is next to the yellow green on the wheel. And then I would pick a neutral, which was going to be a sepia brown type color. That's a cool brown. And so I started out with a sepia pencil. It is from Jerry's Artorama and they're called jumbo jet pencils. They are a oil and, uh, charcoal blend lead obviously it's not lead but you know the thing inside the wood and they're fat and chunky and uh, sturdy and you can really press and write you know scribble I just I wanted to just <sighs> scribble I just wanted to use my muscles and just make some marks so I started out with that and then I had also picked a yellow green and a um, red violet woody pencil that is a water soluble pencil made by Stabilo and it's a different type of lead if you will it's it's very water soluble you can um, put water on it and like you know make make it into kind of a watercolor look by spreading it out with water but that wasn't what I was using it for I just wanted to scribble and I wanted to have something fat that I could put in my hand and the jumbo jets and this and the woodies are what I was looking for something fat and chunky and sturdy that could stand up to me pressing hard as I was mark making because I just this was an, an exercise in trying to get uh, something going I've I know those of you who've been watching my channel and watch it regularly know that I haven't made a video for a week, over a week. Um, and I, I hate to, <laughs> I hate to keep saying this, but I'm just, I'm so tired of everything. I just, I can't, I can't get it together. I go in the studio and I try to force myself to make art. And nothing is good and I don't want to do it. I just don't want to even be there. So this exercise in abstract is a way to get myself to move. And I actually started this project on our live stream because I am still live stream streaming with Peg every Thursday in the morning. And so I got to do something, right? I'm on a live stream. I can't just sit there and stare at my canvas board. So um, that's where I started this and then I finished it later, like a week later. It just sat on my desk for a week. I know I'm not the only person feeling like this. I I know that everything that's going on in my world, um, in my personal world, and also in the world of the United States where I live and um, the entire world where we're having this pandemic and we're in quarantine and just really not conducive to doing art. But I know that I should be doing art because it makes me feel better. If I can get into the groove and get moving and push it and push through that block, I can actually have fun. <laughs> so 
I don't know what my problem is. I just need to get in the studio and, and work. And this week I'm going to do that. I'm just going to work something every day. Even if it turns out really ugly and I never show it to anyone, I'm just going to do it. It's going to be a forced situation. So I'm continuing with this piece. I've got that sepia colored paint. I've got out some Naples yellow, which is a, um, a nice color that goes well with these other two colors that I picked for my color scheme the yellow green and the red violet. I've got a stencil. Um, I've got a mark making tool that somebody sent me, which is like a piece of plastic grid like stuff that makes an interesting grid mark. Um, the stencil has that same type of a grid situation and I'm putting it on there and then um, pushing back the paint and trying to bring some of the, the pattern through with uh, a baby wipe to pull off some of the paint. And that's a fun way to make marks too, just by pulling back the paint. And I've got a paintbrush and I'm just, I've sped this up to eight times fast because the process isn't, I can't explain to you the process. I can't teach you anything about this um, by talking about it. It's just, it's just being intuitive just trying to disconnect your brain from all the junk and just get some color on there. Just, you know, I picked some colors and now I'm just going to put them on there. I'm also using my fingers, um, pushing paint around with my fingers, adding more colors, less colors. Uh, at this point I decided maybe I wanted some of this fluorescent pink, um, that falls on the side of the, the red violet. Red, red violet kind of starts going into pink and magenta um, on the one side. And so I used a different stencil that had some hearts on it uh, to just try to make some marks with that. I used some white gesso as well. Uh, one thing that I struggle with and I mean, this is, this is in any type of art, is leaving white space. I cover every single piece of everything. I just cover it all up. And then I realize, oh, there's no contrast because I didn't leave any of the light. So then I have to bring it back in. And that's the reason that I prefer acrylics over any other paint because I can do that because the white in acrylic is opaque titanium white. I mean, you can get, you can get some, um, that are not as, as opaque, but titanium white is opaque and pretty much any of the tints of colors like this, you know, this yellow, um, it's also opaque because it's got some sort of a deeper yellow tone mixed with white. So, with acrylic, you can always bring it back. <laughs> you can always uh, bring it back. But then when you try to translate into other media that's translucent, like uh, watercolor, you have to leave the white because there's just no way to bring it to bring it back. Once you've covered it up, you can't bring it back. Unless you do mixed media, which of course I do. And then you can just mix the acrylic with the, with the watercolor, with the markers, with the whatever. Um, you can use other things like gouache and stuff like that. So it's not the end of the world, but you know what I'm saying. So I've got out some bits and pieces of paper that are stuff, you know, stuff and things. There's deli paper, there's tax weight paper. Some of it's been gel printed. It's got pattern on it. Some of it's stenciled and these are just little pieces that I have around everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. <laughs> and I'm adding these over the top of all my mark making and painting and scribbling and finger painting and everything that I did. Um, now I'm adding another layer of composition to it by adding these papers. I'm using Liquitex Matte Gel Medium. That is my preferred medium for collage. And I think the combination of acrylic paint, mark making, and collage makes fantastic looking pieces. There's so much layers of depth and um, no matter where you look on the piece, there's something that you didn't notice before. And that's 
really what I love about doing this. Um, this, this is what I want to do right now. Making abstracts with collage is what I want to do right now. There's really nothing else that even sounds remotely interesting to me. <laughs> there are some pieces in the middle that are a red cardstock that is left over from when I cut out some letters. You know how you can use a strip die cutter um, to cut out letters for something and you always have excess letters for one thing. There's always letters you didn't need because the strip, strip die cut has all the letters and you only need a few of them, right? Uh, but, but also left over is the the other part and it has interesting shapes plus it adds a little bit of texture because it is this is cardstock it's a heavier weight all the rest of the paper is um, text weight or deli paper or something that's going to really um, there might even be some tissue papers things like that that are really going to stick down and and not really have much texture but that cardstock leaves a texture once you've gl you've glued it down so I put those in the middle because I thought that that would be an interesting pattern, someplace to draw your eye. And then for the rest of the time, I struggled with it. <laughs> I didn't like it. I didn't want it to, to look like letters because it is letters, but I wanted it to just look like random pattern lines, right? And I was... I was just annoyed with the whole thing. I also was annoyed when I took my tape off and it tore some of this canvas board. That shouldn't happen. It's paint tape. It's supposed to be low tack. So I had to fix that a little bit with my um, pencil and a ruler because it kind of tore off some of the edges, which, grr, grr, that made me mad. <laughs> but then I continued um, messing around with the pencil, which made me happy, so... I I know that abstract is abstract. Like it's not supposed to look like something. So if you look at it and you see something in it that makes your brain say, oh, that's a face. Oh, that's a dog. Oh, that's a whatever. Then it's not, it's no longer abstract. So if that happens, then, and you were trying to make an abstract piece, then you kind of failed, right? <laughs> because even though you may not see it, someone else did. So, you know, you're back to the drawing board on that. But this one ended up, ha I ended up putting a focal image on this one intentionally because I just, I kept messing with this part in the middle. Um, I lightened it up with some gesso. I, uh, darkened it back up, I lightened it up again, I sanded it, I did all kinds of things to try to make myself happy with that cardstock that I glued down that I was thought was going to be so cool and ended up being so annoying. <laughs> uh, I also picked out things that I could see and drew over them with a pencil. Um, and that's kind of where the show ended right there. And then this, this thing sat on my desk for a week. And then I came back to it on, I guess, Monday. Monday was my day to say, okay, it's a new week. I know that Sunday's the new week, but not to me. Sunday's a day of rest. So I rest on Sunday. I don't, don't <laughs> say that that's the new part of the week, <laughs> even though it technically supposedly is. It's silly. But um, yeah, I started wor working on Monday and I, I did make a couple pieces on Monday. So I guess I did uh, something. I finished this one and then I did another one. So also abstract. Now I have this, uh, it's made by Pintel. It is a brush pen and it's got sepia water soluble ink in it. It's not an India ink. I wish it was. It's not. But it's kind of the same idea as the Pentel pocket brush, which I'm completely obsessed with. It has the black India ink in it. But uh, this one is a little bit larger. and But it has the same type of a brush, but the brush is a little bit longer. And it's got a water-based ink in it. And I can't remember what it's called, but I'll, I'll put a link below 
the video of the products that I use today that anything that that looks unfamiliar to you um, something new I will make sure that there's a link if you use my Amazon link it is an affiliate link which means that were you to use it I get a few cents so I'm always happy when people use my links my affiliate links it doesn't cost you anything it just costs Amazon something and believe me they can afford it <laughs> we all know they can I saw something really funny the other day that I thought was I mean obviously it wouldn't work but it just it was a a smart idea it said why don't we train all the Amazon uh, delivery drivers how to do vaccinations and then we will all get our COVID vaccination very quickly <laughs> I thought that was funny so I did get out my um, Posca pen which is an acrylic paint pen and mess around a little bit with that with my marks still trying to make myself happy with this central section of the piece but I can still see that those are letters and I just yeah just don't like it and I I just continue to struggle I made some splatters I like to make splatters with the white pen you can just shake it down and it flicks out the end and makes splatters and uh, it's a lot less messy than trying to do it with like a toothbrush or something and you can direct it pretty well um, I added some more pink I'm just looking at it going oh, I don't know what to do maybe I need to just set this aside again I added some more purple trying to calm down the white because I decided it was too white and I just yeah just back and forth back and forth um, taking away adding taking away adding which is kind of a process that most people go through in any type of mixed media you take away you add you cover up you you reveal so here um, I found this postage stamp on my desk it was on a, um, when I get happy mail or even just regular mail if the postage stamp is interesting I just tear the corner of the envelope off and I put it in a little um, a little plastic bucket uh, somewhere I have a larger container that I have a bunch of them in but <laughs> I uh, had this one on the desk still it hadn't it hadn't progressed past just being on my desk which happens to a lot of bits and pieces and scraps and you know whatever and it had the right colors it was the same type of colors as I was already using and I put it on there over that part that I didn't like and I thought you know that kind of looks cool so I glued it down with the matte medium and then I thought you know now if it's going to be the focal part it's not big enough so I had this circle of cardstock cut out from when I made some some ornaments I cut a bunch of cardstock circles that were gel printed on both sides and I thought that since there was that kind of wonky circle motif to the right side there that I could continue that by putting on this piece and kind of circling this little postage stamp and it wasn't quite the right color so I got the the um, the yellow green back out and finger painted over it and then I gave it some more weight using that sepia pen again and blending it out so that it looked a little bit dimensional and a little bit more interesting and then then I was happy now it's not technically an abstract anymore because there's something that says words and and it draws your eye but you know it's better than just having that dumb looking whatever it was in the middle of that that I hated so <laughs> that made me happy then I wanted to do some glazing uh, glazing is just giving kind of like a, unifi a unifying layer of a color uh, that's very translucent but when you put it over everything or most of everything it kind of brings the whole piece together with you know a color just just a light little layer so I use some of this I zinc ice that I purchased from Seth Afters store it's made by Aladine um, which is a French company and he has his own line of them uh, I think this one's called iced tea or something like that but I will put a link for that but it just it helps 
to kind of make everything more unified. So that's it for me for today for this kind of abstracted, not abstracted mixed media piece. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks. Bye-bye. <laughs>